is Dr. Shi and I welcome you back to our machine learning class using Python. So last few classes we are looking at ensemble models and we have seen that how beautifully ensemble models can improve individual classifiers, right? So some of the schemes we see were soft voting, hard voting and then how decision tree can be used by bagging and random forest, okay? So today they are very focused questions where how to find feature importance from random forest. So this is one of the important ancillary benefits from random forest. Can we use top features of random forest to improve decision tree? Can we use random forest to improve random forest? Meaning that with those top features, can I improve random forest? Then we look at how to fit an adder boost. We look at the effect of learning rate on adder boost. We look at how to fit gradient boost, then look at some of the parameters and how they affect gradient boost, like max depth, minimum sample leaves, and number of stages. Okay, so let's start by doing some housekeeping. So we have got, we have read the data set. Let's look at some of the top rows and see how it looks like. Yeah, so this is how it looks like. There are two cl classes, as I said, R indicates rock, and you have 60 numerical attributes. You can, it has 61 columns, as I said, so 60 independent variables you have. First question is how to find feature importance from random forest. So uh, let us start again by doing the trend test split, and as you remember, I lock. Uh, can take a subset of columns. So we are taking the first 60 which are your input and we are keeping the last for the output variable. So let's split this and get X train, X test and corresponding Y train and Y test. All right. Now let's go and fit random forest classifier over here. So we are not interested to look at the accuracy. We are just fitting because we are going to look at the feature importance, okay? In estimators is 100 means that 100 decision trees are being used and random state equal to 42 is for reproducibility. So you and me both get the same result. Okay, so random, uh, random forest classifier has a cool uh, attribute called as feature importance. So what we are going to do is we are going to form a panda series where name of the series I will take from the column names and the scores will come from this feature importances. Yes, yeah, so we have this now in our series. If we want to look at some of them, we can take a look. We can maybe look at zero to five, the top five or not top five, the first five elements we can look at. So this is how our series looks like. This is your index and these are the values. So we can do a horizontal plot of the first 10 features and look at how they look like. Yeah, so this is how it looks like, you know. Uh, so there is quite a lot of variety or variation in the feature importance. You may want to look at the entire series at a go and that will make the plot little bit uninterpretable, but you can still make out that there is a lot of variation coming up over here. So we thought, why don't we sort this? Why don't we sort it and uh, sort in place? So this is also a very important feature. So if you in place sort, your series gets changed. Okay, now you have uh, the series by the feature importance ascending value uh, equal to false or by the descending value. Okay. So our feature importance is done. Now let's see that, can you use these top features of random forest to improve decision tree? You might have a question that why do I at, at all need to do that? We have seen that decision tree gives us, uh, gives us an accuracy of 71%. And why do I need to do that? So let's first run this. So we import decision tree classifier, then we fit our decision tree and let's look at the accuracy quickly. Yes, as I said, it comes to 71.1%. Okay. But is there a need to improve decision tree? So please understand that there is a lot of emphasis on making your models more interpretable. 
So if I can use important features and get an accuracy of 71.15%, that itself is a big benefit. Secondly, if I can improve, that's a bonus. Let's see what happens. So our random, I, we have already used random forest to find feature importance. Here what we are doing is from that data frame, we are taking top K features and we are varying K over here. So it will vary from 5, 10, 15 up to 55 that way. And for every time we are training a decision tree with the top 5 feature, top 10 feature that way. Okay. And let's run this. Now let's, let's try to plot this and see what is the result. So if you see the result, interestingly, you'll see that for some of the cases, so here will be maybe 71%. So there is quite a lot of improvement when you are at 30 features. Okay. So somewhere <clears throat> where you have like 50% of the features, there is an improvement by 7%. So interpretability is up, your accuracy is up. So this is a very good thing that random forest helped do decision tree. Now the question is, can we use random forest to improve random forest? So we might get tempted and think, all right, let's do this way. Let's uh, use random forest top 30 features and then see if random forest is giving us better accuracy. So let's try it out. Okay, so if I look at top 30 features, this is how is our accuracy, it is 82.69%. You might have forgotten what was the accuracy when we use all the features. So let's use all the 60 features and see how it looks like. So it is 88.46%, okay? So what's happening, right? Uh, we are When we are using 30 features, which gave, which improved, decision trees accuracy by 7%, when we are doing the same experiment for random forest, what is happening? Our accuracy is going down by 6 to 7%. So why it is happening like that? The reason is, if you remember, the key to assembling is built up uncorrelated trees. The more number of features you have, the more uncorrelated the trees will be. So it will not be a good idea to use random forest to improve random forest. Okay. All right. Now let's see how to fit an Adaboost. So it is simple. It is like all other cases. So we import Adaboost classifier, then we are fitting it. If you remember, this is Adaboost uses stamps. So we have used max depth equal to one. N estimator equal to 200 means that how you are estimating or how many trees you are using or how many stages they are in your Adaboost. Learning rate equal to 0 0.5 just tells you, you remember that if we don't use learning rate or use a learning rate of 1, it will overfit quickly. So that's what we have used as 0 0.5. Now let's run this. So the accuracy is around 84.61%, not bad. A lot of improvement from decision tree. Now, let's look at effect of learning rate on Adaboost. So what we are going to do is we are going to vary the learning rate from 0 0.1 to 0 0.65 and see that what is the effect of Adaboost. So we are running this, training this Adaboost classifier in a loop and finding the accuracy each time. We are adding this uh, accuracies in a data frame. So later on, we can plot. So all these are ensemble models. So may take a little bit of time to run. So we have got the result. So what we are doing is we are changing the column names to learning rate and accuracy. So they are more interpretable and then we are sorting it, sorting it in place. And then finally we are plotting a line plot. So this is how it looks like, you know, uh, there seems to be some improvement. Okay. So earlier it was 84 point some percentage. Yes, so you can see that at least 2% have increased by just playing around the learning rate, okay? So this is a very, very important, important realization if you think, okay? So let's quickly look at some of the rows over here. Let's look at maybe top eight rows and see. 
yeah so if you see yes indeed there is something as 86.53 so quite a lot of improvement you know in 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 what we can see all right so now how to feed a gradient boost gradient boost also we feed similar ways we import from ensemble then we use different parameters and fit it okay and let's look at what is the accuracy of gradient boost so gradient boost also gives you around 84.61 percent good improvement from decision tree we can play around with the with different parameters now if you remember so what what is this term regularize so basically you know these are very complex model they can overfit overfit the data and you can regularize that using different parameters so one such parameters is depth of the tree and the lesser the depth of the tree the less simple it is and it has less tendency to overfit okay so what we are doing is like every cases we are changing the max depth from 2 to 9 and running or training this gradient boost classifier each time and putting it in a data frame so let's look at so we have changed the columns we have sorted it by ascending order and then we have plotted it in a line plot so look at how it looks like one very important and noticeable thing is that for some cases now accuracy has increased up to 90 percent so we have not seen a 90 percent so far with gradient boosting some tuning of the parameters we could reach up to the there yeah so this is interesting indeed yes so you could see that we have reached up to 90.38 percent okay now how to regularize using minimum sample lead so what is minimum sample leaves? That means for a leaf to happen, how many samples in minimum is required? If you keep it at one, then your tree can be very bushy. You can have a lot of leaves and there is a tendency to overfit. Okay. So we'll change again from 20 leaves and we'll go up to two leaves and see the effect. Okay. So again, we are, we are training. We are taking this value and let's run this. We have changed the name of the columns like all cases yes so again if you see that for some of uh, the sample leaves you have good values okay so basically you know uh, at 14 15 samples you are again reaching a 90 percent okay below that maybe because of overfitting uh, it is not allowed and after that actually maybe your tree is underfitting so that's how this graph is and now let's see how to regularizing using number of stages so more number of stages more overfitting so we have varied the stages from 10 to up to 300 and looked at how this changes okay so let's run this and now let's we have changed the number of stages and accuracy and now let's plot this yeah so you see that after some amount of estimators it has just flattened out however there is a good amount of increase i'll be interested to look at if we could break our earlier record of 90.38 so let's look at this now maybe 15 let's see how it looks like So, no, we are at 90.38 only. So, this is what we are we are saturated at, but there is still quite a lot of improvement. So, we have a few more questions also. So, as and when we get time, we'll give new, you new corners and try to answer this question. Thank you so much for watching this video. As every time, please feel free to put your questions and we'll try our best to answer them one by one. Thank you.